works. Don't just get involved. Fight for your seat at the table. Better yet, fight for a seat at the head of the table. Donald J. Trump. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. That was Barack Obama. <laughs> That was a graduating high school senior pulling a bit of a switch in, uh, switcheroo. He figured his Kentucky audience wouldn't take too kindly to a Barack Obama quote, so he supplied Donald Trump's name instead. Now, this seems to fit right into a world where facts are invented and the president has, shall we say, a rocky relationship with the truth. Case in point, President Trump says he disinvited the Philadelphia Eagles due to their disrespect for the national anthem, even though no players took a knee last season. Now the White House says they were disinvited because the Eagles pulled a, quote, political stunt by committing to show up and then only sending a few players to apparently embarrass the president. Let's get back to the panel. Uh, Keith, is this just the president returning to his classic playbook? Distract, deflect, culture wars more comforting than getting embarrassed in your home field? Yeah, of course. He knew he was going to get embarrassed because only 10 or fewer players are going to show up. 70% uh, of the NFL is black. He made a statement last fall. He said that they were SOBs. And um, people took that to heart. How, why would you want to go to someone's house after that person called you and your friends SOBs? So, of course, they didn't show up. And then I heard just today LeBron James said that whoever wins the NBA series will not be showing up to the White House as well. Uh, Donald Trump has created division in America, racial division. He's unfortunately divided America on, in the line of sports, too, something that's supposed to unite us. I mean, seriously, Bruce, get sports out of our politics, out of our sports. I mean, look, you know, I get Popovich and Kerr have not been cheerleaders for Trump, but the NFL, at least the owners and the fan base is deeply in favor of Trump. Is he cutting off his nose to spice his face in a pit of personal peak? Well, politically, he may be winning with the audience he cares about, which is those people culturally that he's activated, that have come to support him, that help put him in the White House. But I think, writ large, the American people are looking for a way to de-escalate this. Who mm -hmm. can rise above this and be respectful? I think it might have been nice if the Eagles just would have made an announcement, like LeBron did, that, hey, we're not coming. You, everyone understands the reasons why, and we'd like to keep a dialogue going forward about how to move forward as a country on this rather than this continual fight. Well, and yet that's usually the kind of leadership you look for from a president, Steve Rogers. The president's supposed to take the high road, but this president seems to enjoy getting down in the gutter. Is this beneath the office? And in the past, you had some players refuse to go to the White House to meet with President Obama. Did you think there were heroes then and, you know, you know, Enemies of the American it's, people it's, now? It's blame President Trump for everything that goes wrong around the world. Here's my point. No, let's put things in perspective. Only for the things he does. The NFL, <laughs> the, the yes. NFL owners yes. and the NFL players created this fiasco. They've taken the NFL brand, which we all want, which I adored, okay, and they've turned it into a political football, no pun intended. Well, and we're going to say you assume that. Uh, yeah, but, <laughs> but, as, but as Bruce said, the American people want to watch football. You want to protest, do it outside the stadiums, but come and let's watch sports. So uh, you, I don't blame the president for this. Your argument is not the president to stay out on of strong yeah. foundations. The I, president's escalating this, Aaron. Yeah, he's, he escalated it, and I think it's because it works for him. It gets his base riled up. That's what but he's doing. They said this, they is a winning, this is a winning t thing for Donald Trump. Do you think that was nice to do, to, to have the team come as a team and then all of a sudden say, well, we're not going because we don't like this and that. They I think it was. I think it was fans. awesome. I think that awesome. they. I think it was awesome. I also. I also think that there are fans that showed up to see the Eagles, and I cannot imagine being an Eagles fan showing up to the White House to see the Eagles, and they're like, "Up, oh, Eagles right. are canceled. Here's a bunch of lame conservative celebrities instead." I, and also the fact that Donald Trump th thinks that he can kind of take on the Philadelphia Eagles fans shows that he doesn't know very much about sports at all, because those people do not forgive and they do not. And, forgive. And, and, and Pennsylvania is a swing state. Yes, the president's base is on the west side of the state, which is Steelers territory. But I mean, isn't this really, I mean, can you really defend the president polarizing Super Bowl champions? Uh, he's, he is not responsible for polarizing the Super Bowl <laughs> champions. And when it comes to Pennsylvania, believe me, we're going to see an uh, overwhelming number of people in that state elect him to office in 2020. Do you remember the time when yeah. President Obama said that the whoever won the NHL championship, whoever won the NFL championship, whoever won the NBA championship was a son of a bitch? No, no, Keith. But this is. But, but let me say this to you. But thank this you. is. This is. Listen. That's, that's all I have to say. This is so who Trump, really okay? started the president he, of the United States with all the awesome nah, power Keith. that comes behind that is denouncing professional athletes for exercising their First Amendment constitutional rights? That is divisive. These professional the athletes problem. are making millions and millions of dollars, and they the still have the right to free great, speech, just the, as every the other person does. Knows. But off the field, Keith. That's all I'm saying. You, exactly the president, does not get to decide that. We do. We need someone to rise above, and traditionally that person
person has been the commander in chief. Apparently not this one. Thank you all very much for an enlightening conversation. I didn't need my Captain America shield today. Thank you. Okay. Well, you know, we'll supply it next time. And one serious final note before.